everybody, welcome to Dove Cape Fishing. Today's video is going to be kind of simple. I'm going to run you through the rigs that I like to use when fishing flatheads. I'm going to show you my bottom rig and my float rig. So we're going to start off with the bottom rig. Uh, everything's whisker seeker except for the hook. I've got 85 pound whisker seeker braid to a 50 pound mono leader. I use a 5 or 6 ounce weight depending on the current to a bead and a barrel sole. Then I like to use, I pre-tie a lot of hooks, a ADOT Gamagatsu Big River bait hook, 50 pound mono leader, and a lot of people put the rattles above their barrel swivel, I like to put mine on my leader. Now yes there's a really good chance of losing beads and rattles when you do this, but the way I do it, I think I prevent a lot of that from happening. So we're going to set that down. What I like to do, I got my rattles, I got a bunch of beads and stuff, is I'll take a bobber stop. I like to use neon green, chartreuse, whatever you want to call it. And I'll slide that bobber stop onto my leader line. And I'll slide it down a pretty good chunk of the way, get that nice and tight. You see, move it up, move it down. Now the theory behind this is if I get snagged and I break and I have to break off, hopefully all we lose is the hook. And hopefully this saves all of our beads and rattles and stuff. So, once you got your bobber stop on, Trim your tags. You should preferably use scissors. Don't use a knife by your face like I do. So now we've got that trimmed. Then we'll slide a couple of smaller beads on. These are beads that came with some older floats that I had. Just real small red ones. And I like to do three or four depending on how many I got. Just slide on like that. And then I'll put my rattle. And then just for extra security, I like to put one of the big whisker seeker rattles on top, just for a little bit of noise. But I like to leave plenty of space so my uh, rattles and stuff don't get in the way of the hook. But I feel this will keep the fish making noise. And what I'm going to do this time is actually put another bobber stop on here so it holds the the rattles where it's at. This is just a theory. This is what I'm this is what I do. This is not something you have to do. So cinch another bobber stop down real good. Cut the tags. My, my theory in this is that it'll make more noise every time the bait fish kicks, whether it's bullhead, bluegill, whatever. So there you got top knot, bead, rattle, three other beads, another knot, and then you got your hook. So then, I'll come up here and attach it to my barrel swivel. And since it's mono, I like to use a clinch knot just in case we get into a heavy snag and I can't just break the hook off. Wet that down. Get you a good knot there. It'll focus. There we go. 
cut the tag. And there's my bottom rig. Six ounce weight to a bead, barrel swivel, and now hopefully every time that fish kicks, it makes them rattles go nuts and hopefully that draws in a big old flathead. All right, so the second rig I like to use is a float rig. Now we're gonna start off with a rubber bar bobber stop like you would use when you're punching or flipping for bass. Again, this is 85 pound braid for the main line. You just put it through the hole and slide it up the line. You wanna get rid of that kink that you just created. So, I'm gonna be on there like that. Slide it up the line a little ways, just so it's out of the way. And then just for a little bit of security, I like to put a bobber stop on like this, just, just for that extra security, because I don't like stuff slipping and getting out of where I want it to be. Pull that off, cinch it down. Slide it up to the other one. And then cinch it tight. And then you just have a little bit tighter stop. Because if I cast and I've got a heavier bait or my weight happens to catch that and slides it down a little bit, that's not good. So we'll cut the tag ends. Try not to cut them too short because if they do slip, you're kind of screwed. Oh, yeah. Nice and tight. So, what you're going to want next, of course, is a bead. Always want to protect your knots. Then I put my sinker slide that has my choice of float. And I use Muddy River Catfish Bobbers. Uh, the Whisker Seeker Bobbers are great. Uh, these are just what I prefer. Um, I've had good results with them. I've caught a lot of big channel cat. I haven't got to catch a flathead on them yet. This guy really has to blow his driveway off right now. I hope that's not too loud for you guys. Seems like any time I want to come out and film, I got to do it three or four times because people got to be loud. So then we slide that on. Then I'll slide another bead on. Then I slide a two ounce egg weight. And as you guessed it, another bead. Always protect the knot. Then, put our barrel swivel on. Palomar knot. Such it tight. Cut your tag. Got a good knot. Now, what I like to do when I'm float fishing is use circle hooks instead of J hooks. Because I feel the pressure of them pulling away the bobber, all you should really have to do is set and reel down to them and it should put enough pressure to hook them. So, We are using triple threat hooks by Whisker Seeker, uh, 5 aught. Really good hook. I don't, I haven't had any hookup problems with them. Pull that out.
I have one sitting here in front of me, but I cut the uh, too much off the leader, so it's not long enough for my liking. Good God, my bullhead are going nuts in the bucket over here. So now, another thing I like to do with these is rattles and beads. So we're gonna do the same thing as the last rig. Just kinda exercise my theory and see if it works. I'm gonna put a bobber stop. So in case we break off, we can try to save the rattles. Cinch it. Cut the tags. Okay, so you got your power stop. And I gotta dig for these beads because they're kind of small. They're not as big as the red ones on the last rig. Now oh, there's a red one, we'll use it. And we dropped it. And it just rolled off the back of the chair. And it's gone. So slide on these little green beads. Down to the bobber stop. And the rubber bobber stops don't work on 50 pound mono, it's a little big. And we'll slide our rattle on. Another bead to protect a knot, as always. So you've got while that fish is flopping, he's still making noise. Tie your swivel on. And fellas, if you got a goatee or a beard, don't do what I just did and almost cinch your uh, hairs into the knot. So now, there's our little rattle rig. So now what we're going to do is grab, get another bead. Actually, we don't because the bead fell. Okay, cool. And because I've got all this stuff on here, it's a little bit harder to do the polymer knot, so we're just going to do a clench knot with braid. I haven't had a problem with it slipping. Cinch down tight. And now, your float rig is ready to go. If I can figure out how it did that. There we go. So now the weight will keep the bait down up to your bobber. And then when it when you cast it, it will slide down till your bobber stop meets, and that's your depth. And at night, stick a glow stick in the top and watch that thing run. 
But those are my two basic rigs for flathead catfishing. I hope you liked the video. Sorry if it's a little long. Uh, not as organized as I'd like to be right now. But hope you guys learned something. If you'd like to try it or if you would like more detailed, I can do it on a tabletop so you guys can see the order and everything. But uh, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hope you guys have a great day.